Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 614. The topic today is, well, you should say, is knowing half the battle? And now do something about it. And I'm, that's supposed to make some sort of logical sense, and it doesn't, but I'll, <laughs> I'll work it in and explain what I mean in a moment. Before I jump in and explain, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these things every day. Um, things yeah my name is Barry Selby I'm a best-selling author speaker and relationship attraction expert and help strong successful and high achieving women create balance in love life and business I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine which led me to do these talks starting over two years ago thanks to some big events at the end of 2016 I'm going to them here called messages from the masculine inspiring your feminine heart and most of these talks have been geared towards women, although frankly I do talk to men and women in some of these talks, although most of my coaching and support and programs are for women, just so you know. And so these talks are every day on Facebook Live. And if you're watching on YouTube, this is a replay. And if you want to watch me on Facebook Live, join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I'll give the information again at the end with everything else. So today we're at episode number 614. And the topic today is... Knowing is half the battle, or is it? And also, do something about it, or now do something about it. I'm going to have to rewrite the title to make it fit more logically, because as I'm saying it, doesn't doesn't land the way I want it to. But there's an old saying called, or an old saying, which is, knowing is half the battle. And this is related to your um, relationship issues, <laughs> to be blunt. Um, I've talked a couple of days ago about something on this path. Yes, I did on Sunday, I think it was, which is two days ago. Today's Tuesday. Um, I was speaking about this experience with a friend who and, and a client as well. There's a parallel going on here about how she was recognizing that the pattern she had in her interactions with men were absolutely um, consistent, as we're putting it. That what she's experiencing with these men was and it's not even just the romantic relationships, but all relationships we have with men around a business, personal, romantic, social, all those things, the same thing kept happening. The men were flakes, to be blunt. They were not keeping their agreements. They were not showing up when they said they would. They let her down. And she realized it was basically due to the relationship she had with her father. And it's true because her father, as she said and shared with me, had been absent most of the time. He just wouldn't commit, wouldn't show up, wouldn't, wouldn't be there for her. And so she realized very clearly that as an adult, her relationships then, or she's, sorry, relationships now, were, ex were mirroring back to the experience she had when she had with her father when she was younger, back then. Now, that is the epitome, epitome right word? It's a good example of what I'm talking about here in this context about relationships specifically, where she knew what was going on and knowing half the battle, so they say, but the truth is, the bigger part of the challenge, as in more than half, is doing the work to resolve and change the patterns that were installed in the first place. Because what she's doing as an adult is not actually something she's doing intentionally. But what she's doing as an adult is automatic pilot. And if you don't like the idea about being driven around in your life by automatic pilot, especially when you don't get what you want because your mind is going, I wanted that, but I want to end up with over this, here with this. That is the, the divergence if you're a conscious intentional choice and you're automatic pilot the challenge for you unfortunately as for most people all of us in fact is that automatic pilot our automatic pilot let me phrase it that way is more powerful than a conscious choice and probably going but i thought i have free will i can do what i want yes and we think we have free choice but this automatic pilot we're running through our lives especially around the area of relationships and interactive patterns and it is the patterning that's going to be a part of this, are absolutely governed by that pre-programming that was put in a long time ago. So you may say, well, I'm going to move to a new town and you're start a new job and change your style, change your outfit and everything else, and I'll meet a new... And ladies, I'm using this as a model for, for, model for women. Let me say it again. So as a woman, you decide to move to a new town, start your job, cut your hair, change your outfits, wear new colors, and date somebody totally different. And yet the strange thing will happen the man you fall in love with, who didn't let you know ahead of time, it wasn't something you get, here's my patterns, it doesn't give you like a laundry list of all the stuff you will do, ends up doing the same thing with or to you or around you, 
that happened in your past relationships when you lived in the town you lived in before. It ain't geographic, and it's certainly not based upon what your outfit is and what you look like. This is hard what no, well, it's heavily imprinted wiring, or like pilot, that's been in there since you were a kid. And as an adult, knowing this is like, great, I now know my patterns. However, knowing that you have these patterns doesn't stop them happening. Because again, automatic pilot overrides your freedom of choice. Because you may you know consciously go, I know I keep attracting partners that have this pattern going on, I don't want to do that anymore. But Dan, if the next relationship you're in has the same pattern once again. This is unfortunately part of the human dynamic. It's actually part of our, um, which part of the brain is it? I'm not a big brain specialist, but I know it's basically it's the midbrain. So it's the, it's the subconscious part of the mind in the brain that was imprinted up until about the age of seven or eight. I've talked about this before because it's not new information and it's something that's relevant to the work I do with my clients, which a lot of resolving those old patterns, is that from zero, as in when you're born, until the age of about seven-ish, eight, give or take, your subconscious mind is like a massive vacuum cleaner, sucking up everything around it to understand the way life works. Because when we come into this world, we don't have pre-programmed ideas. We don't know what we're coming in. There's a, there's a debate about how, how spiritually aware babies are that can't articulate what they're seeing until they get older, in which case, as they get old enough to articulate, they lose connection to that spiritual realm. That's a whole other conversation we get into, but not in this talk. That's the woo-woo stuff I know about. <laughs> but it means that basically from zero to five years old, six, seven years old, we are learning how to walk, how to stand up, not in that order. So how to stand up, how to walk, how to talk, how to interact, how to eat food, how to use utensils, how to climb up the stairs, how to get into trouble, all these things we do as part of the exploration of life. And so we learn habits very early on that become defaults in our programming because once they're in as defaults, we no longer think about them. And because our conscious, subconscious mind is the governing um, awareness of our being, up until about the age of seven, because our conscious mind hasn't really come online and decided to take charge and make things happen. I'm being kind of silly about it, but that's the way your conscious mind thinks it is. It thinks it's in charge. Unfortunately, thinking doesn't. Thinking isn't being. It's different. That's another topic I talk about. Okay, I'm realizing lots of spin-offs from this. So again, as a young child, you'll learn to do things based on what you observe because what we're learning as we're growing from zero to six years old is by what we're either told, what we're shown, or what we copy. Some of this is the same, by the way. So we will learn from our adult teachers, parents particularly, and older siblings, and even uncles and aunts, you know, sit up straight. You, just, you, know, you, you put your hand over your mouth when, you, when, you, when you're eating or whatever that is, close your mouth when you're eating. These things we learn as imprints become defaults ideally when we get older. Now some of these are good things, they're manners, they're skills, they're useful things to use. And then the other side of it is the subconscious stuff we pick up that we didn't want to pick up. So if you were in a relation, you were in a family dynamic where your parents were always having arguments all the time, you would default as a subconscious program to choose partners that will give, give you arguments all the time. In fact, you won't believe there's loving there until you are getting argued with. Because the wiring that happens as a child is what it is, 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 is um, expressing as an adult. So in that, that paradigm, if you're noticing all your adult relationships end up in, are always in arguments and you feel like you'd, one, you'd be nice to a relationship where it was actually calm once in a while, the likelihood is you learnt that arguments were what was common in a loving relationship, at least the way you had it wired. Now your parents may not have been loving towards each other, but the wiring you took on was relationship must involve arguments because that's the way I'm seeing it in front of me. That's the wiring that happens. Fast forward 20 years, 30 years as an adult, as you're dating and in relationships, you will have pre-programmed in your subconscious that automatic pilot to choose relationship partners that will end up being great arguers and not great in a good way unless you like that sort of stuff. Some people say, well, it's an Italian family, it should always happen like that. Well, that's not true, necessarily. But it's a, it's a quality of relationship that isn't necessarily required, especially when it's an attacking argument. If you get hot-blooded and you have passion, that's one thing. But if you're, if you're chewing at the other person and knocking down their character and destroying who they are, that's not the same thing. So if that's something you're doing as an adult, 
I can pretty much guarantee, not that I have any, any skin in the game for this one, but it's what I do in my work, that you picked up this habit when you were very young, before you had decision-making skills to stop doing it. You fell in the trap, as we all do, all human beings, I would say 99.9% .9 of human beings on the planet, picked up habits on how to relate to other people based on what they saw when they were children. And it becomes automatic pilot, so their childhood imprinted skills, programs, wiring, takes over their conscious life when they're adults. So the way they interact with people, the way you might be scared of certain people, the way you might be aware, of low, sorry, wary of or loathe of certain people, that happened when you were younger. Now, that's the first part, <laughs> which is, um, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Knowing is half the battle. The second part's where the work comes in, because now we know this, and it's been proven scientifically, and psychologically as well, the question then becomes, how do you go back and change it? Because you can't erase it. You can't just go, oh, forget that, I'm just moving on. And I know there are people who do NLP, neurolinguistic programming, who have skills to go back and do the incisive processes. That works to a degree. The challenge with it, though, is that for the transformation to happen, is it ha you have to do the emotional rewiring and the emotional reprogramming. And that involves working with your younger self. And I'm going to give you the cliff notes for this because it takes time to work with clients to go through this. But the simple thing is, it's going back in time to find the first time that pattern got imprinted. Basically, the first time you remember it happening when you were a child, observing it. It takes some doing to get there. It's not usually like, oh, I remember exactly when it happened. Unless, of course, you do have the experience, because some people do for the very dramatic ones. Then the choice becomes, OK, so that's the awareness. How do you now change it? And that's a bit of rewiring work that happens. Um, it's an integration process. It works with different parts of your, of your psyche. Also works with childhood and, and reparenting. Lots of different things, like the skills I use. But I'm, and what other people use too. But if there's something you're aware of, don't just think, oh, I know about this, I'm fine. Your homework as of this moment, yes, I'm giving you homework right now, is you, your, um, or your assignment. If you're aware of patterns that are running in your life now, sorry, let me say it another way. If you're aware of having relationships happen the same way every damn time and you're sick and tired of it happening that way, is that clearer? I can guarantee you it comes from something in your past because here's one of the things. If you go through 17 relationships or three where the same thing happens every time, the one common denominator isn't the other partners, it's you and the choices you make. That's coming from that automatic pilot I mentioned. And your homework, your assignment, is to first of all become aware of what that is. Because for some people, they're not even aware of this much. They're so oblivious, they just go in the same relationship, go, this doesn't work, I'll go to the next one. Because if you're somebody who's not, a, if you know somebody like this, because you're not like this, but you know somebody's not aware enough to be aware of their own patterns, they may be going, this relationship sucks because we're always arguing, and leave and go and find another one. And they get another one that's arguing again. And they forget that it happened in the last relationship. And this recycled pattern that comes through again and again and again, this recycled habit that happens again and again and again, is absolutely ignored by some people. The recognition is the first step. So again, knowing is half the battle. I would say knowing is about a third of the battle, not half, but that's me. But knowing about the patterns is the first step. But the second step is to do something about it. And that's the real work. Because for most people, I can say this. For most of the people, some sort of therapeutic context, some sort of coaching support, some sort of encounter work with somebody else is alien territory. Yet for most people, it may be the best place to do the work to find out, to change what the wiring is. You can be free to love from a new place, a clean place, where that whole old wiring gets, gets totally um, erased and transformed. But the first step is awareness, as I mentioned. So knowing is half the battle in the sense of becoming awake is the first step. Like, great, now we can do some work. And it's time to do the real work. So I've given you some clues, some ideas, some insights into why that would happen, and also some solution ideas. If this appeals to you, if you feel like you want to do some real work, I'm going to put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me. Because I'm not promising that I will work with you. I'm not promising you want to work with me. Let's be clear about that. So. That's what you show. Exactly. That's what you show. In parts integration, that's part of the work I do. 
So yes, you know this stuff. You and I are on the same page. We should talk more often. We have, we have a, lot of, a lot of common skill sets. For me, this is my passion and my work to help clients, my clients, learn to love in a healthy, clean, effective, successful way. And without that auto, with the autopilot in the way, it doesn't work. But without that autopilot, you're free to love from a new place, from a clean place, from a whole, healthy, um, integrated place. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session, discovery session with me. And I will invite you as your homework to look at your own patterns, your own programming, your own wiring, your own experience of relationships, and see where the common threads are. See where you see the same thing happen while you broke up, perhaps or the situation in the relationship where you felt like you needed to leave. Look at those points going back. Love you too, Elizabeth, thank you for that. Support, by the way. Um, when you go back into those relationships and find the common indicators in each of those relationships that were the automatic pilot that was guiding in the same place, like you're driving to the ditch again and again and again and again. Once you figure out you got in that ditch, that's the first step. And when you've done that, then reach out to me. Again, link will be in the comments. Okay, I think I've given you enough information to work with and given you enough stuff to scare you, perhaps. <laughs> um, replays so you can find me, find me where I am. Again, I mentioned at the beginning, this is a Facebook Live that goes out every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can join me on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby, and catch me again 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. I also put them onto YouTube, where you may be watching this now. And if you're on YouTube, you can follow me at Barry Selby or subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. All these live there. And thirdly, thirdly or fourthly, I always get them all mixed up. I have a podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine, where all these live in audio format. I should say they are starting to live over there. I've got a bunch over there. You can subscribe to the podcast and listen to the audios whenever you want. Um, if you know somebody should watch this, please share it with them. It may just change their life. It may also scare the bejesus out of them, but it may just change their life. Secondly, if you have any questions or thoughts about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'll respond afterwards. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel, and I wish you a pleasant evening, even though this might have disturbed you. This is all for the good, by the way. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.